Hello friends, I hope everybody's doing good and welcome to part two of the Honda pressure washer here that we're working on. Um, the first thing we did on part one was I um, made sure the fuel flow is good out of the tank and this has an upflow uh, fuel, fuel system and because of that it has a fuel pump. Um, we also um, checked out the fuel pump here and how that works is it uh, draws pressure from out of the engine here to work the uh, fuel pump and also what I did was I disconnected the uh, fuel line that goes up here to the carburetor so I disconnected that and we pull started it a few times and we saw that it had fuel pressure uh, coming out the fuel lines are in pretty good condition too we made sure of that and so today what I'm going to do is uh, after priming it uh, it still wouldn't start so we have a problem inside the carburetor here it's probably dirty so what we're going to do today is continue uh, with this I'm going to uh, take the carburetor off we'll take it apart and see what's going on we'll clean it all out put it back together and see if it'll run after that so let me get set up and I'll be back to you in a second Okay, as you just saw, I already took the uh, gas tank off, and I showed you how to do that on part one. And I'll leave I'll leave a link to part one of checking out the fuel system. I'll probably put it in the comments. I'll pin it on the comments here. And uh, let's get going here. So, the air, I try I tried to take the air cleaner off, so we could. Could see what's going on a little better but these two bolts here hold this uh, air cleaner housing on and the carburetor as well so we're going to begin by taking them off first I want to thank you all for your uh, heartfelt comments on part one I appreciate it Thanks for all your support. So this is a little complicated. I don't ever remember taking one of these apart. I probably have in the past. But. I'm trying to get this bolt all the way out of here. air cleaner housing I'm trying not to destroy any of these gaskets here and the gaskets seem to be okay here okay um, okay so the choke lever this is the choke here this has like a Z bend in it so I'm just figuring we can Just swing it down and pull the rod out. You might have to move the linkage around to do that. I had to choke it a little bit. So we got that off. So the gasket is not harmed here and the gasket's still good on the carburetor base here. So just put this aside here. There's 
another plate here with another gasket, which the gasket seems to look okay. So we don't want, we want to try not to harm anything here. Okay, and then we just have the spring that goes to the carb here. And another Z-band here. So here's our carburetor now. So I'll move this stuff around a little bit. We'll get set up to take the carburetor apart. I already loosened the uh, ball bolt here. This here is a vent that just stays open. It just has a hose that comes down. So I took that off already. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take this thing apart and try to clean it the best we can and hopefully uh, the carburetor is salvageable. Ah, spilling gas on me here. The float seems to be working okay so far but we'll have to take that apart and see. So I'll be back to you in a few minutes here. Okay, so first thing I'll do is I'll take the ball bolt off here. I'm trying to judge exactly how this went back on. We'll put it back on the same way. I was hoping I could get this uh, heat shield off here, but we'll end up damaging the gaskets, I think. So we're just going to have to leave that. There is gas inside the ball here. So, I don't know, if maybe the main jet in the carburetor here is, uh, might be clogged with some dirt. So, we'll take our pin out here. And we'll take the whole, uh, needle out. Wow, it's got a really tiny needle in there. That's tiny. Gotta watch how we don't lose that. And this has a seat right on the needle, so we'll probably get it get away with just cleaning this carburetor out with carburetor cleaner. Now as far as in here goes, the jet. I have to see how that's held in there. So for that I'm gonna have to get my magnifying glass because I still really can't see that well. But See what holds that in. Yeah, it looks like a screwdriver. I want to get set up with a screwdriver. I have a special screwdriver that I use. I know this is too bad, probably, to get in there. Yeah. All right, let me get set up for that. I'll try to take that jet out. Okay, so I got I found the right blade to put on the end of this uh, driver here to uh, get the jet out. So we'll just unscrew this here, the jet and the emulsion tube in there. Looks like it should be almost all the way out. I would say. A little stuck in there. I don't know if I unscrewed it all the way. I'm pretty sure I did. Still a little tough to see right now, so please bear with me. You rascal. See if I can stick my torch tip in there and grab a hold of it and pull it out. Try that. My torch tip cleaner. Okay, so after uh, I had a hard time getting this out here, I um, kept tapping this over here and it was almost coming out. And I kept spraying WD 40 in here and it finally came out. The main jet came out and the uh, 
emulsion tube is out, and I clean the emulsion tube the best I can. I, what I did was I used the magnifying glass. I still can't see good, and there's a whole bunch of holes in here. So I was able to hold the magnifying glass, and um, I was able to poke all the holes out here. And I just sprayed some uh, WD, make sure everything was clear here. So everything looks clear as far as that goes. And then we're going to do the uh, idle jet now. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to take the uh, idle adjustment screw to adjust the base idle. I'm going to have to take that out. So let me see how far in this thing was. This is one that's going to be hard to adjust if I... Uh, put it back together it'd be hard to get to this screw here it's a Phillips head screw so look let me see if I could uh, just unscrew this out it's not really not even in there that far so I'll just unscrew this out here and then um, I'm just gonna uh, blow some uh, either carb cleaner or WD-40 through all the passages here. Really still hard to see. This was uh, a little too intricate of a job for me to start doing already, but I have to get this one done. Now we have a Phillips head screw we got to take out here. It's the idle jet. I think this is just a solid screw here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just take the uh, the, the tip of the um, WD-40 here, and I'll just spray down in here. I might use, I might use, the, there's no pressure in this can, and it's almost empty anyway. But there's no uh, rubber seals or anything that I could harm. So I'm just going to take some brake cleaning spray it through there. seems pretty clear. I don't have to open another can of uh, brake clean. Good. Yeah, that's not good. Alright. I'll be back to you in a minute. Let me find and get another can of uh, brake clean ready to use. Okay, so you just want to spray every port that you see here. Like there's one down here. If I could get the straw in there. You should have seen a hard time I have just putting the straw in the can. And then you'll you'll just see the uh see that port right there, and then you'll just see the uh brake clean float through there. You can't go in this way with it, uh it's like a one-way port. Oh no, you can go either way. Then there's another one in here. You want to spray in there. Um, where the needle goes in. This is where the hose goes on. So you want to make sure you have a good flow in there too. If I could get the straw back in here. Yeah, I got it. Okay. That's where the hose goes back on the carburetor. Okay. Um, I did. That's about it. And then you know, I you saw me take that screw out here, and this is the low idle jet. Let me just give a little spray through there. I don't know if I'm getting it into the port correctly. I know I'm getting it all over the camera, so. Let me see if I can get into that port. 
This is the idle main, the idle jet, where you saw me take that screw out of there, the cover screw. How come it's not flowing through there? I wonder. I'm gonna see if I can get the uh, torch tip cleaner through that. Maybe that's clogged. This is funny, isn't it? Trying to work blind. It's crazy. Having a hard time passing this through, but it's coming through. I want to put you on pause a minute because there's no sense in you watching me struggle with this. Okay, so it took only about 15 minutes. I put the float and the uh, needle and seat in, and then I stuck the pin back in. Now just give it a... Okay, it's working properly. Okay, I'll be back to you. I'm going to stick the bowl back on. I, I might as well just stick the bowl right, right on now. Okay, so the carburetor goes on the engine this way. Okay. This is really clean in here, the bowl. I'll just give it a quick little uh, spray. I just blow it out of the uh, air. Okay, so this one on like this. You know, there's another. Um, oh, it's the bleeder screw right there. I'm not even going to play around with that. See how it's got the bent hose that I was telling you about that comes out here? If you open this up, it, it I guess it gets the air out of the ball. But we're not even going to mess with that. It was a little bit of, on an angle like this. It was. Yeah, so that screw sticks straight out towards your face in case you want to bleed out the ball. So, we're not going to be bothering doing that. Let me just tighten this up. <clears throat> While I was tapping the carburetor to get the uh, emulsion tube out in the main jet, this fell off, but it's, the gasket's still all intact. So, it's just another thing I'm going to have to hold on there to get the carburetor back on. So you saw how I uh, took the carburetor off, just reverse procedure. I'm not going to film that part. And um, I guess the next thing that will happen is after I put it back together, um, I'll hook up the water to it. And the commenter said it, and he's right, but I only had it run it for a couple of seconds. We were trying to test it to make sure it ran. But you should never run your uh, pressure washer without hooking up water to it. So let me get to that point. And uh, we'll start it up and see if it runs. Okay, so the first thing I did is I hooked up the governor linkage. It's already hooked up here. It was already hooked up. But I hooked it up to the carburetor. What I did was I hooked up the uh, Z-Bend rod first. And then I connected the uh, spring. Sometimes you could just connect the spring and then put the Z-Bend in it. I tried it that way and it was kind of hard to do. And what I did was this uh, heat shield here. It has a gasket on the inside and a gasket on the outside. I got that in place. So um, then I took the uh, choke assembly here, okay, and that was easy. I just 
uh, hooked it in right here. It's just like, you know, pretty easy to do. Um, I wanted to show you this before. It is the last piece that has to go on, and that's the backing of the, uh, the uh, air filter housing here. So after I put the, if I put this on, then I wouldn't be able to show you anything else. And then once I uh, bolt up the carburetor, then I can uh, hook up the fuel line here. And, um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I hooked the water up to it. And we'll see how it does. It seems to be okay, even though we didn't see any dirt in the carburetor. Um, it had dirt in the carburetor. So. Make sure there's no fuel leaks. So it's fixed. Okay, so that's going to be it on this video. And I hope somebody got something out of it. This one's a little complicated to do the carburetor on. But I was lucky enough to be able to see enough to do it. And um, that's going to be it for this video. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all on the next one. And stay safe.